producers had called you and said, yeah. you, you need to lose some weight. And then they said, I need to lose weight. So I went on a diet and I didn't really think too much of it. I'm like, I'll, I'll just go on a diet, be done with it, lose the weight, and it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. I started to lose weight really quickly because I went on a really extreme diet. The last scene of Growing Pains was us in an empty living room at the Seavers house and we're all eating pizza. I couldn't eat pizza, you know? So I, I fake eat, and I very badly fake eat it. In the glittering expanse of Hollywood, the saga of Tracy Gold, the once beloved Carol Seaver from Growing Pains, unfolds like a tragic masterpiece, revealing the dark underbelly of an industry notorious for exploiting its stars. This gripping tale not only tugs at the heartstrings, but also serves as a glaring testament to the industry's long-standing penchant for taking advantage of its actors. Tracy Gold's journey commenced at the tender age of four, an age when most children are still discovering the wonders of the world through innocent eyes. However, for Tracy, the world unfolded under the scrutiny of lights and cameras. Her debut was a mere cameo in a Pepsi print ad, a prelude to a career that would weave through the intricate tapestry of television and film. As the curtains rose, on her early acting ventures, Tracy found herself entangled in the unpredictable web of the entertainment industry. Two canceled series, Shirley in 1979 alongside Shirley Jones and Goodnight Beantown, in 1983 with the venerable Bill Bixby, marked the initial strokes of her acting canvas. The capricious nature of showbiz had other plans for her, as the role of the youngest daughter in the pilot of Gimme a Break slipped through her grasp, replaced by Lara Jill Miller when the series unfurled its wings. Yet, resilience defined Tracy's spirit. In the feature film Shoot the Moon, 1982, she stood among the on-screen daughters of Albert Finney and Diane Keaton, a testament to her versatility. Television beckoned again, with a guest appearance on her sister Missy Gold's series Benson in 1985, a familial connection interwoven with her burgeoning career. Little did she know that the pages of her narrative were about to turn significantly. 1985 marked a pivotal chapter in Tracy's tale. Audition Positioning for the role of Carol Seaver on Growing Pains, she faced an initial setback as Elizabeth Ward was cast for the pilot. The twists of fate, however, orchestrated a different narrative, and Ward was replaced by Tracy Gold. Growing Pains may have been one of the biggest hits of the 1980s, but as is often the case when a TV show has a large cast, there was sometimes discomfort and drama brewing when the cameras weren't rolling. For example, Jeremy Miller didn't like that Leonardo DiCaprio was cast in the role of Luke Brewer, a teenager who begins living with the Seavers in season 7. Some of that conflict has continued today. Kirk Cameron doesn't get along with the Growing Pains cast anymore. While the other actors seem to have bonded on set and they look back on working with each other fondly, there is one cast member who had a pretty terrible time. Tracy Gold has opened up about her years playing Carol Ann Seaver and the devastating health struggle that she went through. Tracy Gold's Growing Pains character Carol Seaver is smart, precocious, and often seems perfect. She works hard at school, and during each season of the sitcom, she goes through the regular problems that any high school student does. She falls in love, worries about being popular, and thinks about her appearance. Although some sitcom episodes are upsetting to watch, Growing Pains was always pretty cheesy. The show did attempt to talk about topics that people are really going through, though. It turns out that just like Carol Seaver struggled with her mental health at times as she felt stressed about her life, the actress who played her had a hard time. The journey through Growing Pains would become a defining saga in her career, spanning from 1985 to 1992, a period that saw Tracy ascend to the realms of teen stardom, but also one that harbored a silent adversary. In the corridors of Hollywood, where the glow of success often conceals shadows, Tracy Gold grappled with a foe that wasn't visible on the screens, anorexia nervosa. The seeds of this battle were sown early, around the age of seven, when the concept of dieting crept into her consciousness amidst the hustle and bustle of television production sets. The influence of the television movie The Best Little Girl in the World, starring Jennifer Jason Leigh as an anorexic teenager, cast an unwitting spell on her young mind. In her autobiography, Tracy revealed that her journey into the perilous territory of anorexia began as an attempt to control her development into womanhood. At the age of 11, a diagnosis of early-stage anorexia nervosa marked the first skirmish in a battle that would unfold over the years. The family pediatrician, sensing the gravity of the situation amid a growth spurt, became a guide in the early chapters of her struggle. Counseling became a beacon of hope, leading Tracy back to a semblance of normalcy during her teenage years. Yet the ebb and flow of life brought new challenges. 
In 1988, at the age of 19, the hiatus of growing pains witnessed a change in her physique. The sitcom's scripts, rather insensitively, called for her to be the target of weight-based jokes from her on-screen brothers for several episodes. This period marked the beginning of a tumultuous relationship with her body weight, a struggle that would echo through the corridors of time. The turning point arrived in October 1988 when, under the supervision of medical professionals, Tracy embarked on a harrowing journey of self-imposed deprivation. The medically supervised 500-calorie-a-day diet became her companion as she navigated from 133 pounds to a mere 110 pounds. Despite the gravity of the situation, scripts continued to include weight-based jokes, blurring the lines between fiction and the actress's harsh reality. In her autobiography, Tracy delved into the darkening shadows of her struggle. Between 1989 and 1991, an insidious obsession with food and weight gnawed at her spirit, each passing day marking a gradual descent into the abyss. The public eye remained oblivious to the silent war waged within, even as the scripts of growing pains mirrored, albeit subtly, the reality of her internal turmoil. The distorted self-image found expression on screen as her character gazed at her body in a carnival mirror, a poignant moment that encapsulated the battle she fought in the shadows. In 1990, seeking solace and healing, Tracy ventured into group therapy as part of an eating disorder program. However, the journey took an unexpected turn, revealing more ways to lose weight rather than a path to recovery. The parallel between her real-life struggles and the on-screen portrayal deepened as her character grappled with her body image in the carnival mirror. Tracy's life had become a haunting reflection in more ways than one. By 1991, the shadows of anorexia cast a long, ominous silhouette over Tracy Gold's life, starving herself more than ever, resorting to vomiting as a desperate means of control, she spiraled into a precarious state. The once vibrant actress, now a mere specter of her former self, found herself admitted to a hospital in early 1992. Her lowest weight, estimated to be near 80 pounds, was a stark testament to the severity of her struggle. The crescendo of her battle reverberated beyond the confines of her personal space. Growing pains took an unexpected turn as Tracy's skeletal appearance led to her suspension from the show. The tabloids, always hungry for sensationalism, splashed photos of her emaciated body across their pages. In the unforgiving glare of public scrutiny, Tracy became one of the first celebrities to be formally outed for anorexia, a role she never auditioned for, thrust upon her by the relentless scrutiny of fame. The 1991 episode, Menage a Luke, marked Tracy's last appearance before a brief hiatus. The two preceding episodes had hinted at her problem, the weight of her struggle evident in scenes that mirrored the stark reality she faced. Her return to the series in the late spring of 1992, though valiant, was far from a full recovery. The curtains were drawing to a close on growing pains, and Tracy's personal and professional battles intertwined in a bittersweet finale. After years of grappling with the shadows, Tracy Gold emerged from the crucible of anorexia. The year 1994 witnessed her return to the screen in the television movie For the Love of Nancy alongside Jill Clayburgh. The film delved into the harrowing journey of a young woman battling anorexia and the far-reaching effects on her family. Tracy's personal struggles infused the portrayal with an authenticity that transcended the screen. Despite warnings about potential damage to her reproductive organs due to the years of anorexia, Tracy defied the odds and welcomed four children into her life. The echoes of her battle, however, linger in the background, a reminder of the arduous path she had traversed. Yet, Tracy Gold's tale wasn't just one of survival, it was a narrative of transformation and resilience. As she navigated into her 30s, Tracy found herself at a crossroads, a juncture where the lessons of her tumultuous journey could be shared. Maintaining a healthy weight for her body structure, she became a voice of caution and compassion. Speaking engagements became a platform where Tracy, once the protagonist of a harrowing tale, warned young women about the perils of eating disorders. The actress continued to tread the boards of the entertainment industry, a seasoned performer whose personal battles had etched depth into her craft. The narrative, though scarred by the shadows of anorexia, became a beacon for those grappling with similar demons. 
Tracy Gold's journey was no longer just her own. It had transcended into a universal tale of resilience, hope, and the indomitable spirit that could weather storms and emerge, battered but unbroken on the other side. In an exclusive interview with The Hollywood Reporter, conducted by Kimberly Nordyke on December 2, 2011, Tracy Gold opened up about Hollywood's weight obsession, the prevalence of online critics, and her role as the host of Lifetime's unscripted series, Starving Secrets. Gold, who battled anorexia in the 1990s, expresses concern for actresses on hit shows who undergo drastic weight changes. She attributed the issue to a pervasive problem beyond Hollywood, emphasizing that societal pressures contribute to an ongoing cycle of body image struggles. The interview dove into Gold's latest endeavor, Starving Secrets with Tracy Gold, where she shares her own experiences and collaborates with specialists to help women battling life-threatening conditions like anorexia and bulimia. Reflecting on her own struggle with anorexia at the age of 19, Gold discusses the show's mission to make a meaningful impact in the lives of those affected by eating disorders. Gold addressed the contemporary challenges faced by celebrities, pointing out the increased scrutiny brought on by tabloids, media outlets, bloggers, and online comments. She condemns the anonymity of online critics, highlighting the toxic impact they have on individuals striving to meet societal expectations. Praising stars like Demi Lovato and Mary-Kate Olsen for seeking treatment openly, Gold acknowledges the courage it takes to confront personal battles in the public eye. The interview explored Gold's nuanced perspective on actresses' weight loss, cautioning against quick judgments and labeling. She stresses the importance of understanding individual struggles before assuming anorexia, highlighting the danger of trivializing the complexity of the disorder. Gold shared the genesis of starving secrets, motivated by her belief that eating disorders were not receiving adequate attention. Serving as an executive producer, she aims to dismantle stereotypes and present a realistic portrayal of the isolating and raw nature of these disorders. The six-episode series seeks to inspire women facing similar challenges to seek help and dispels the glamorized view often associated with eating disorders. Reflecting on her time as Carol Seaver on Growing Pains, Gold mentioned her enduring connection with the cast through various reunion events. She shares a warm bond with Leonardo DiCaprio and reminisces about their time together on set, noting the actor's busy schedule but expressing confidence that he would warmly greet her if they were to meet. Gold also mentions Robin Thicke, son of her TV dad Alan Thicke, praising his talent and success. When the actress was interviewed by Oprah Winfrey for the TV show Where Are They Now? She explained that she was suffering from her eating disorder when shooting the very last growing pain scene. Gold said that the characters were enjoying some pizza, but because she didn't allow herself to have any of that food in real life, that made acting challenging. She said, it lends itself to be very difficult again because I couldn't eat pizza, so I very badly fake eat it. She continued, I mean, where did my acting skills go in that last scene? Horrible. I forgot how to hold a piece of pizza. It was ridiculous. Tracy Gold ended up getting better because the network, Warner Brothers, knew that she needed to find support. Her character Carol spent time in London in season seven of Growing Pains because the actress was in so much pain that she wasn't able to stay on the show until the series finale. This must have been a very hard and emotional time. In a 2016 interview with Fox News, Gold talked about exiting Growing Pains. She explained that the media began talking about her struggles before she had shared them publicly. She said, I had to leave Growing Pains towards the end of the seventh season. There were probably only two episodes left. The producers and Warner Brothers had me go into an inpatient treatment program at a hospital. It started as a little tiny blurb in TV Guide and then it kind of spread quickly. In any case, Gold's life hasn't been all dark. In a 2003 interview with the Chicago Tribune, Tracy Gold talked about her eating disorder and said that her marriage to Roby Marshall helped motivate her. When asked about realizing that she should find help and start eating again, Gold said it was my husband. She continued, I had this dream of getting married and having children and moving forward in my life. All of the things I wanted were slipping away from me. I always thought I could stop before it got bad. I didn't have that control. Gold and Marshall have four kids, Aiden, Bailey, Dylan, and Sage. They have been married since 1994. In the years after she shared that she was suffering from anorexia, Tracy Gold has become an outspoken and inspiring figure, and she has done her best to help others who are dealing with the same problem. Her memoir, Room to Grow, An Appetite for Life, was published in 2003. This was an early step in using her platform to talk about the hard topic of eating disorders. In any case, the cult of perfection still reigns supreme in Hollywood. 
celebrities often regarded as demigods by their adoring fans, find themselves ensnared in a perpetual quest to embody an idealized image crafted by the industry. This ideal transcends talent and skill, extending into physical appearance, body shape, and an ephemeral concept of beauty that is both unrealistic and unattainable. For actors, the pressure to conform to societal expectations of beauty and physical perfection becomes an unspoken prerequisite for success. In this unforgiving landscape, the casting couch is not only a metaphorical hurdle but a tangible one, where appearances are scrutinized as much as talent. This expectation game propels celebrities into a cycle of perpetual self-improvement, leading some to resort to extreme measures to achieve and maintain the desired image. The pursuit of fame and success often comes at a steep price. Hollywood is notorious for its demanding schedules, relentless competition, and a culture that thrives on cutthroat ambition. Actors find themselves constantly under the spotlight, both on and off the screen, as their every move is dissected by a voracious public hungry for the next scandal or triumph. The draining demands of the industry create an environment where mental health can easily be compromised. One of the most insidious consequences of Hollywood's obsession with appearance is the prevalence of eating disorders, particularly anorexia nervosa. The industry's fixation on slender figures and chiseled physiques sets a toxic standard that can lead actors down a perilous path. Anorexia, with its roots often tangled in the desire for control and a distorted body image, becomes a silent yet potent adversary, afflicting individuals who succumb to the pressures of maintaining an unattainable ideal. Celebrities, often perceived as invincible icons, are not immune to the vulnerabilities that accompany the relentless pursuit of perfection. The constant scrutiny, coupled with the fear of fading into obscurity, can exacerbate existing mental health issues or trigger new ones. Anorexia, in particular, manifests as a coping mechanism for some actors, a way to regain control in an environment that seems increasingly uncontrollable. Some of the celebrities who have struggled with eating disorders include Taylor Swift, who revealed that seeing pictures pictures of myself every day could send her into a spiral. A picture of me where I feel like I looked like my tummy was too big, or someone said that I looked pregnant, and that'll just trigger me to just starve a little bit. Just stop eating, she said in the film. Swift later went into more detail during a candid conversation with Variety in January 2020. I didn't know if I was going to feel comfortable with talking about body image and talking about the stuff I've gone through in terms of how unhealthy that's been for me, my relationship with food and all that over the years, she told the outlet, admitting that she's not as articulate as I should be about this topic. The cardigan singer recalled being told during photo shoots that stylists were excited to not have to make alterations to sample size clothing. I looked at that as a pat on the head, she continued. You register that enough times, and you just start to accommodate everything towards praise and punishment, including your own body. While she was initially wary about sharing her journey with the world, director Lana Wilson called it one of her favorite sequences of the film and praise the cat star's vulnerability. I think it's really brave to see someone who is a role model for so many girls and women be really honest about that, the filmmaker told Variety. I think it will have a huge impact. In May 2021, Tess Holliday also shared her own journey on social media after receiving comments about her weight. I'm anorexic and in recovery. I'm not ashamed to say it out loud anymore, Holiday posted on X. I'm the result of a culture that celebrates thinness and equates that to worth, but I get to write my own narrative now. I'm finally able to care for a body that I've punished my entire life, and I am finally free. To everyone that keeps saying you're looking healthy lately or you are losing weight, keep it up. Stop, she wrote on Instagram. Don't comment on my weight or perceived health. Keep it to yourself. Thanks. She added, I'm healing from an eating disorder and feeding my body regularly for the first time in my entire life. Holiday ended her post by telling people that, if you can't tell someone they look nice without making it about their size, then baby, please don't say Nuthan at all. Lori Hernandez also faced an intense amount of pressure to perform at the highest level as an Olympic gymnast. She told Us Weekly exclusively in June 2021 that her habits were obsessive and unhealthy, but she didn't realize it right away. Honestly, it was a really long up and down journey of understanding food and understanding how I saw food and how my body received food, the Dancing with the Stars alum explained at the time. There was a lot of learning and a lot of patience and grace involved. Now I don't count or track calories, I'm just kind of eating clean because I also know that food is a fuel and for what I do and it is important to eat healthy. 
In any case, while still relatively uncommon, the Hollywood industry has made strides in becoming more attuned and supportive in addressing mental health, body image, and eating disorders among its stars. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.